Hello and welcome! Today we are sitting inside of a 2019 Ford Escape SEL. This is a four-wheel drive edition. Let's take a look outside. Alright, so this Ford Escape is a part of the mid-cycle refresh of this generation of Escape. So that includes an updated front fascia and rear fascia. So this does have fog lights up front. It's a pretty sharp looking SUV. It's a small SUV, so it does compete with the Toyota RAV4, Subaru Forester, and the like. This car rides on 255 width tires, sitting on 17 inch alloy wheels. This is powered by a 1.5 liter EcoBoost turbocharged four cylinder engine that produces 179 horsepower and 177 pound feet of torque. It's a very small engine, but it does the job. This car does have Ford's Easy Fuel, which is a capless gas tank cover, which is very nice to have. In the back here of this Escape, you do have a pretty nice boxy design, but it has some nice angles. Looks pretty good. Back here, you could actually tow up to 3,500 pounds with this engine. Even though it's a 1.5 liter four cylinder, it has a lot of torque down there, so it can do well. Let's check out the cargo area. So this does have a power rear tailgate. So back here behind the second row of seats, this is only a two row SUV, you do get a pretty sizable area for storage. You also get some little nice side cubbies on each side and a nice little 12 volt charging port back here. It's not massive storage, but it does the job. And this does have a power close rear tailgate. Let's take a look in the rear seat. All right, so here in the back, I am six feet tall with pretty long legs and I have lots of headroom above me. I still have about probably three to four inches of headroom, very healthy amount. My knees, however, do bump into the front seat. It's back almost as far as it goes though, so over there a passenger may have more room. There's a very nice leather interior inside of here. Some very nice contrast stitching and a little bit of bolstering for these back seats. They hug you pretty well. You do get rear climate vents back here, along with a 9 volt charging port. Sadly, no climate controls are available back here, but that is to be expected in this class. You do get a nice little cup holder armrest combo right here. Works just fine. And you do get a nice panoramic sunroof in here. So that is power open. And it also, you know, it'll let in natural light all the way to the back seats. Very nice. All right, so up here in the driver's seat, it is very comfortable up here. Once again, you have the full leather interior with the nice contrast stitching and the, the torso has some very nice bolstering in these seats. It really, really is pretty good at hugging you. Feels good, very comfortable seats. The driver's seat is power adjustable while the passenger retains manual adjustments. Both front seats are also heated with three levels of heating. Up here, there is no memory driver's seat, so I kind of wish that were present, but that's okay. There are nearly no blank buttons in this entire escape, which is always a good thing. There's only one I can find right here. So generally they did a very good job with fit and finish. The interior here, it has a, a lot of soft touch materials. Here is padded, there, all along the dashboard. Unfortunately, not near the driver's knee. I wish that were present, but it, it's a pretty roomy, roomy leg chamber here. So you don't typically need it. For the center armrest here, you do get a two tier storage area. So that's pretty good. It's pretty deep as well. You do get an electronic parking brake and a traditional shifter. This is mated with a six speed automatic transmission. And you do get a sport mode in here. You do get two cup holders, another little cubby, as well as one back here, a very deep cubby. And up here you get a nine volt charging port as well as a USB type A port and another little storage cubby. You do have auto stop start in here, but luckily you can turn that off with a hard button because personally, I hate it. I just hate auto stop start. It's such a dumb idea because most engine wear occurs on startup. So why would you decrease your engine lifespan by having it rapidly start and turn off whenever you come to a stop? I disagree with it, but that's just my stance. You do have Ford Sync 3 
infotainment up here. So as always, it is great. Very, very responsive. So you turn that on and it's, it's like using an iPhone. It's great. Great response, great brightness in here. And uh, it's, it's very simple to use. It does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard in here. You do get a glove box over here. It is a very, very deep glove box. Great storage area. For the trim in here, it's pretty bland, but it has occasional touches of some plastic, some chrome covered plastic. Doesn't look too shabby. And that runs also right near the engine stop start and also along the dashboard. You do get mostly analog gauges in here, but up in the center screen there, you can see, I can actually control that and change through some information, set up trip. I can do a lot of things right there. And it's very bright and easy to see. You do get cruise control in here, a nice leather wrapped steering wheel. It is not heated, but it is a very nice wheel. Let's do a visor test in here. Awesome, it passes. These are very nice visors too. Pretty hefty, good size. And they have, as always, a very nice vanity mirror. Awesome. Visibility in here is overall great. Really, the A-pillars are very thin. And because it has a pretty boxy design, it is a very nice SUV to be inside of, to see around. For safety features in here, you do get blind spot monitoring detection in each window, and you do get auto collision braking. Options in this car include lane departure warning with lane keep assist. That'll just about do it for this video. Make sure to check out my POV test drive of this vehicle on my channel. Thank you for watching and take care.